Let's go, Meatball. Meatball Molly going up against Luana Carolina. She is kind enough after a very long media day to join us on the program. Let's say hello to the one and only Meatball Molly McCann. There she is. Let's go. Yo. Molly, Molly, Molly. Hang on, hang on. Yes. Wow, same one. How about that? That is amazing. I love it. Hello. How are you, Molly? How are we, lot? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm I'm fabulous, lads. I'm absolutely living my best life, to be honest with you, mate. It looks like you're buzzing right now. It looks like you have a glow to you. You seem like you're on cloud nine. I just feel at peace and content. And I've just, I finally got to that place again where I'm excited to fight and I don't fear the walk or the the occasion. It's, I'm home. This is... Well, London's not home, but we're in England, so it's very, very nice to be able to to be able to say that and not have to travel to America or to fight Ireland. Not that I don't like fighting in those places, but it makes the preparation a lot a lot easier. Is this the first time that you don't feel those nerves, that fear before a fight on the Wednesday before a fight? Um, I haven't. Don't get me wrong. Like the whole camp, I always battle with my feelings towards a fight always but after the last fight when I was with Patrick it just felt like it, we was back at home and then this time feels the same but but less I just feel like I've arrived I'm meant to be here and it doesn't feel as scary anymore it feels I'm supposed to be here I feel like I'm a part of the furniture now Ariel I love it you have a you have a different kind of confidence to you right like you, that, that I guess what you are explaining is confidence. Like you feel like you belong. You don't doubt yourself. You don't doubt your place. And that comes, I guess, with time. Yeah. It, I've had to explain this quite a few times today, but oh, I'm sorry. You're right. It probably comes with it. No, no. I just, as in, if the read or the, the viewers have, have heard me say it today is, um, this is my eighth fight in the UFC. And sometimes you just have to like, remember who you are in everyday life also do you know what I mean sometimes you might get that little bit of imposter syndrome and I think it's important to I just have to sit back and look at all the training sessions I've done how hard I've worked and then think why do I worry about getting in there because I'm just going to do what I'm the best at so the hard work's been done and I'm, I'm just enjoying every single bit of fight week like Ariel, I've literally got about three pounds left to cut. Wow. I'm eating. Um, maybe because there's no weight pressure or maybe because family's here for the first time in, in three years. Um, I don't know. I'm just at home. I, I, I've shared the cards with nine of the fighters on this fight card before from Cage Warriors all the way up to the UFC. And it's... Oh, what a privilege. What I... How lucky am I to be able to be doing this with the people who I've kind of grew up fighting around from amateur to professional. And not only that, I do believe uh, you'll be able to correct me if I'm wrong. First uh, British woman to fight on the main card of one of these UK cards in the history of the UFC. Is that correct? Not even British, just first female. First female? Really? Uh, on, a, on a London card, yeah. Wow. That's a big freaking deal, Molly. Well, that's what they say, yeah. But <laughs> um, to me, it's a, it's an honour. It, like, don't get me wrong, but I'm just trying to not think about that. Really, I just I'm fighting in the UFC, and I'm I'm fighting for my place to get closer to to Shevchenko. And um, whether I'm first on or I'm last on, I'm, I'm still doing what I love. Wow. Well, I mean, that is a huge uh, distinction, a huge honor. You deserve it. Um, can I ask you, Molly, like, it feels to me, and I don't know if you view it this way as well, um, it feels significant, symbolic in a way, because, you know, everything stopped two years ago, right before this event. Mm -hmm. And so the fact, like, I don't know, it's like almost like the, the clouds are opening up just by virtue of the fact that this event is happening. Do you feel <laughs> the same way? Yeah, there's a mad feeling of alignment within the universe and some people might shake their heads and go, what? But three years ago today, yep. literally probably in about two hours' time, 
I won my first fight within the UFC. Wow. Um, in UFC London with the big eye. Yep. And I remember them them videos I was sending to you and those conversations that we got to have. And um, I just think of the journey that I've been on since that moment. And it's just, it's just, it's the O2, it's London, it's full. We're finally getting the Patrick Pimblett walkout that the, the UK that fans have been waiting for for all these years. I'm here. We're all here. It's just, I just can't believe it. I'm just, I'm really, I'm not being overzealous, Ariel. I'm not being arrogant. I'm not being cocky. I'm not even being overconfident. I'm just here enjoying my time, knowing how hard I've worked for this moment and how much I'm just going to enjoy this moment. It, it, I've never had such clarity before. And I think it comes down to the experience, the time saved within the octagon and being at peace with myself a little bit and and at peace with the fact of I'm, a, I'm very comfortable with fight IQ and fight awareness and and what I know I can bring when I have 18,000 people scream and meatball. What do you remember most from that first win three years ago today? Is there something that sticks out when you immediately start thinking about it? <laughs> that, is, that eye yeah. and the famous picture where I was flipping the beard um, I'll just never forget 29 28 Meatball Molly and um, Dan Hardy coming in and saying well uh, it's a little known fact for you kind of thing the first English woman to win in, inside the octagon and I just remember saying how about that and um, and the many vodkas that I washed <laughs> down the pain of the broken orbital with that's that's what I I remember lying in bed Ariel like literally it was it was on this floor one of the rooms and I couldn't move because the, the eye I just remember thinking I don't even care if I lose the eye I've done it wow. no one can ever get this what I've just won and um, a lot of elation and I can't believe how different like how settled I am now to how I literally felt on that night, you know, like that whole time I was just like this and I don't know, I feel like I've graduated and I've, and I've, I'm at the school of UFC and I'm one of the, I'm on the honor, the honor roll. Same hotel? Same hotel. Wow. That is wild. Um, I, I heard you uh, say, or I should, I should say, I read you uh, say to someone, one of the local papers, that for the first time, perhaps, like you don't have to worry about finances, you're comfortable financially as well. Is that accurate? And does that take and, a lot off? Load off? Yeah, I mean, this time, I three years ago, I was fighting for 10 and 10. And when you pay tax and pay everyone out, it's not a lot there. So you still have to worry about sponsorship and things. And Ariel, I'm like, I'm not balling at all by any means, but like, I'm settled in the fact that the bonus from the last fight is carry, will carry me through this year to this fight. So I don't have to worry about oh, what happens if I lose and then I haven't got that money. And these are kinds of things maybe fighters, uh, sorry, fans would never would never think because you see us on the TV and you see us very active and about and we're everywhere and you think they must be rolling in it or caked in it and you, and you know you know that's not the, the truth and that's why you're trying to do a really good job for us to always tell our story and share our story so um, the the UFC were very complimentary with the the contract I was given um, and I know if I get a few more finishes or if I finally get this face finish in the UFC this weekend, I can imagine the next contract will be will be a nice lucrative one and I'm just really happy. I, the company treats me very well and respects me and gives me a really good platform to be me. I feel like they always put you in there with these like tough Brazilians who aren't exactly household <laughs> names. What is up with that? Why do they keep doing this yeah. to you? I know your last fight wasn't against a Brazilian, but I just uh, feel like you have fought this type of fighter several times already. Yeah, well, this is Brazilian number eight. Oh, and, um, <laughs> I've, yeah, and say this is my 16th professional bout on Saturday. This is number eight of Brazilian. And 
I love Brazil. I love the Brazilians. I love the the heart, the spirit, the the character, the intensity that they bring when they fight, and it somewhat echoes my own. And um, and we have a good fight, and that's ultimately what they want to see. Um, two women or, or two fighters just just leaving everything we have in the cage, and I like to be matched. Um, I want someone who, who's going to push me and make me dig more than what I thought that I could go. So when I think about like how would I be like to how would I like to be remembered, it would be um, that she gave everything that she could, and then she still found more. And I feel as if when I fight a Brazilian, they like Scouses, they like Irish, they like Mexicans. Like there's just an inner warrior spirit there that's very hard to break and a very honest kind of style of fighting, and I very much like them. Uh, earlier this week, uh, my friends over at BT Sport uh, premiered a documentary on you. Um, they've been following you, I believe, for four years, um, and mm-hmm. uh, it's very personal. It, it, it tells your journey as not only a fighter, but as a human being as well. Obviously, you're an inspiration to so many. Uh, you are a proud lesbian. You are, you are a role model. Uh, a lot of people look up to you and you give them courage. Could you have ever imagined maybe, I don't know, six, seven years ago, being that open with who you are, with, you know, on tele- in a documentary, on a broadcast like that? Like, could, is that unfathomable to, you know, Molly of six years ago to put your whole life out there like this? Yeah, I think I always imagined Ariel when I was a little gay walking around the docks in Liverpool. I always used to say to me granddad, when I'm big and famous, granddad, I'm going to live on them docks and I'm going to be a world champion and I'm going to do this, that, and the other. And all these things always come to fruition. And I always thought I'd have like an autobiography or a, a film, a documentary made on me. I always did because I knew where I'd come from. Did I think that being true to myself and my sexuality would be a part of it and play a massive part? Probably not. Um, was it something I was very um, not worried because the trolling and the homophobia stuff doesn't faze me because you're only saying what I am. So that doesn't really hurt me now that I'm okay with who I am. But it was a bit of a, it did blow my mind. And I haven't watched it. There's a premiere tomorrow in the BT um, Tower. And I'm going to sit down with a couple of hundred guests and watch it with me mum. And I'm really take it in. And I think that's when it's probably going to hit me a little bit more. Pardon me, the magnitude of of my life and the things that I've been through and see how that can inspire people and push things forward and push people forward and maybe help people come out and stuff. But I never want it to always be Molly talking about LGBTQ+. plus stuff because it's always I feel like the media will always push that narrative because probably people don't speak enough and I don't want people to switch off and go oh she talking about that again but if you watch this documentary you'll just understand why it was very very hard um in the documentary I think I go on to say like when I was a child and growing up um gay lesbian like derogatory words um, to call it a gay woman was always used in a really negative way so I would never even want to associate with that because I would just be annihilated and ridiculed and you ran away from that due to the culture uh, religion where you were born and and an older society um, and an older mindset and we're we're in a position and and I really think it went back to the Black Lives Matter movement when people started standing up and started questioning and started educating. And I thought, well, maybe I can help with that or maybe I can start doing that. And I just had to be a bit more vocal about it myself. And you will see, like, I do break down because I say in it, like, do you think it's comfortable for me to walk around the street holding my girlfriend's hand sometimes when you'll get people say homophobic slays or remarks or or look at you sometimes. And sometimes I forget. Like sometimes I'm so lost in it and 
I come from a, an acceptance city where it's fine most of the time and then you can go away to a different co- country or culture and you have to remember that's not always the done thing and that's not accepted in them religions and and then it makes you feel a bit it makes you feel I don't want to swear it makes you feel a bit unworthy and a bit bad and and we're in an age where that shouldn't be the case do you know what I mean like without trying to get too deep and for people to switch off and be like oh shut up but no no I love it this. just that is how that's just how people are made to feel Ariel and like I'm not going to sit here and, and cry and all of that kind of thing about it. You you learn to get on with it. Like when you are a minority, um, you just learn to get on with it and you learn to humour people when they are offensive to you because sometimes you don't want to make them feel bad for being offensive and then sometimes I just call someone out in it and I go, well, you can't really say that, mate, because that's not acceptable. But in all honesty, it's not, it's not that bad anymore. Like people are very accepting, very accepting, and and the whole documentary and the coming out thing is because MMA was my safe space to do that. So I don't want the people watching in the MMA community thinking, well, we're not like that. No, predominantly not. You know, like you really not. So um, I just want to thank everyone for who has been forthcoming and sending the really nice messages and maybe a fight week when I'd feel really bad would be a lot worse but maybe a fight week when people are giving me so much positivity and so much love um, it's like it's it's massive area because there's people like yourself who you'll know like I'm a good human and I'm a good person um, but you don't do it for gratification and and all that kind of thing you just that way because you are that way but when people see it when you're not trying to be that and they tell you it's like oh you're enforcing I am actually a decent person and I am doing something nice. So, Because the media and people can just change things these days. So it's quite, it's a tough one sometimes, you know. Are you nervous to watch it tomorrow with your with your mother? <laughs> Shall tell Pepsi Max. Yeah, um, <laughs> um, no, my mum watched it yesterday. I was more nervous for my mum, Ariel, because my mum broke her amenity to to speak about her struggles and her demons, which people in recovery who follow the 12-step program wouldn't normally do, ah. you know, but she's doing this for a bigger picture for, for to help other people and to help me tell my story. And when I win and, and I react the way I do, you'll know why, because you'll watch this and you go, she has come from this and this is why this means so much to her. And um, people... A few people have said, will you watch it on fight week? Because that's when it's out. And I just said, absolutely, because that's what's going to give me even more energy to go in there and and to defy the odds. So I was never supposed to be here. I was never supposed to be doing this. It's just I've worked hard to where we are, you know. I saw a lovely video of you. We all saw a lovely video of you uh, a couple of months ago prior to Katie Taylor's last fight. Uh, where you were, uh, I guess, given her her jacket, her tracksuit of the team, and you were openly weeping. Uh, and now I know you guys yeah. are like long lost cousins. You're related, yeah. but I mean, to have that kind of emotion after receiving a gift. Why were you so emotional after receiving that gift? Because I was in a gym in 2006 in a boxing gym, and my coach Kevin Smith is the now Australian national coach, the amateur team. He'd been to a camp and Ireland was there and he had recorded on a camcorder, Pete Taylor and Katie Taylor. So she must have been about 19 or 20. And he came back and he showed me this video and he was like, this is the way I want you to box. This is who I want you to be like. And from that moment, I kind of idolised them. And she's broken down so many barriers for women and she's changed combat sport forever for women. And she's such an inspiration to me and her integrity and her, her just her God-given, um, what's the word, talent and her work ethic is just something I'd strive to, to, to be like. And I met her a couple of months prior to that and I explained to her about the family tree and how um, we were related and stuff and her mum was there and she couldn't believe it and 
then when I got to see her fight in my hometown, I'd seen her fight once before in Manchester, and then but to get to see her come to Liverpool, and I didn't message her, I didn't message her mum, but I was there at the weigh-ins, and I was screaming, so I was the loudest one in the room, and she stood on the scales, and her mum just ran over to me and gave me a hug, and she was like, look, I'm sorry, this is all we've got, and it might smell because she's been sweating in it, but this is for you, and I just put her... Oh, I actually went on the aisle that night, Ariel. I was in the Irish pub drinking Guinness and I had this this jacket on and I was running around town like that. And um, I don't know, it was like, they say never meet your heroes or your idols because they're disappointed, but she really never. And um, it just blew me away. And I'm just dead emotional anyway, aren't I? So I don't know. It's just who I am. Are you coming over to New York for her fight next month? I am. You are? I am, because yeah, Liam Beefy Smith is fighting, and I his boxing coach, Joe McNally, one of them, and Declan O'Rourke, they're my boxing coaches, and I've actually got Joe, Joe McNally in my corner for this fight in the, in the O2, so yeah. Wow. It's, um, it's a family affair, yeah. You'll have to visit us since we're in New York. Visit oh studio. well, lads, get me on. Come on, I have to make sure. Please, you didn't Come tell on, me. Then. I mean, what? I had I not asked, you would have never told me. It was almost like you were doing it behind my back, Mom. Well, I'm it would have offended. It, no, 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 no way. It would have been on the Instagram, but I thought you was in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, or we're in the know, heart of Philly New York City. We're like ten minutes from Madison Square Garden. Shut up. Yes, are Molly. you lads? Yes. Sounds right. Make sure that you've got me an Everton mug. Yes. And, um, and I'll have a Fanta orange and I am there. I would love it. That would be tremendous. Uh, can I ask you, how do you feel about Frankie Lamps? Are we are we happy with him? Do you like him as as the head man of Everton now? I do. I do like him. Um, I was at the media day and obviously they was like, what have you got to say to the Everton yeah. players? I was like, well. <laughs> and um, <laughs> with what he's got, he, he said openly, like, I didn't have a magic wand. I haven't got, I am like, just can't pull out magic yeah. spells out of my pockets. With what he's got, he's doing well, but it's the honeymoon period is officially gone and uh, the players need to step up and step up to the point. And I kind of said before, when I stand in that octagon and I represent my city, I show how much heart I would have if I wore that badge. And like, you know, Ariel, the badge says nil satis nisi optimum and then it means nothing but the best is good enough. Like, every time you play, you must give that. And we've had games, even with Frank Lampard, when we've been beat and we've clapped the players off the pitch because they've played well. But what we will never accept as a club and as fans is if you're not playing for the shirt and you're not ready to die for the shirt or, or put that extra yard in, then... Get out of here. Do you want? I didn't want to swear, yeah. but I did nearly swear. Then, yeah. No, it's okay. Go to go go to some loser club like Liverpool. Okay, go to some sad <laughs> sack club like Chelsea. I mean, we don't want you. Go here. to go to Man United. Go to Man United. Those bums. Okay, we want nothing to do with you. Okay. Yeah, yeah you gang of bums. That's right. Um, Molly, you said earlier that uh, you know you're one of the good people in the game. You're one of my favorite people that I've ever met covering this sport. And uh, I am just so delighted. Shut up, lad. It's true. It's true. I, I genuinely have great admiration for you. And I'm just so excited that you're getting this opportunity at the O2, finally getting a chance to fight back home on this platform, on the main card. You're not buried second fight from the bottom. No, you're where you deserve to be on the main card. Big mm -hmm. fight for you. Looked fantastic in your last fight. You got the bonus. And now, you know, we're moving up to bigger things on Saturday. Snowballing, mate. Let's go. Yeah, we're snowballing and and I've been given an opportunity and that's all we can ask for. So if I didn't take the opportunity, it's my own fault. But you best believe it. I'm going to need a sledgehammer to the face to stop me and I'm still going to keep coming. I love it. I love it. I wish you the best, Molly. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. Good luck to you. Last few days, weight cut, all that. Sounds like you've got it all under control. And what weight cut? Let's Ariel. go. What way could thanks for your time and thanks for all the fans who are sending in so much love. Catches on the flip side. <laughs> Good luck See, to you. Hey, I'll speak to you on Monday or next yes. Wednesday, no. lads. Yeah. Deal. Yeah. Monday. <laughs> We're talking Monday, all right? Good luck to you, my friend. Thank you, Shwe. All right. There she Star is. Lad. Molly McCann, the great Molly McCann.